In this lecture, we'll look at another case where a high order system can be approximated as a low order system, a first or a second order system. In the last lecture, we saw some cases where this happened, mainly the fact that some poles were very fast and other poles were slow. The slow poles were referred to as the dominant poles because the step response was primarily determined by them. The fast poles did not contribute so highly to the response of the system. So for example, let's suppose we have the transfer function with the poles marked in the diagram at the bottom of the page. We have two poles that are complex and close to the origin, and two other poles that are real and far in the left half plane. The dominant poles are the ones that are closest to the origin because they have the largest time constant. The two real poles far to the left have a very small time constant. That means these are very fast dynamics. So this system could be approximated as a second order system with just the dominant poles. Let's now consider another case where a high order system can be approximated by a lower order system. And to do this, we'll do an example with a second order system and show how it can be approximated as a first order system. The system we're going to consider is shown in the block diagram in the center of the page. The transfer function is s plus a divided by s plus 1 times s plus 3. This is g of s. We're going to examine what the step response of this system is. First, I want you to note what the poles of this system are. We have one pole at minus 1 and another pole at minus 3. The time constants associated with these poles are tau 1 equal to 1 and tau 2 equal to 1 third. These time constants are not so different from each other, so it doesn't seem like we can treat the slow dynamics here as dominant. That is, we wouldn't be able to approximate the second order system as a first order system, a lower order system. However, we'll find out that in some cases we still can do this. The key is the zero. This transfer function g of s has a zero at minus a, and that's going to be important to whether we can approximate this as a lower order system or not. To find out when we can approximate this second order system as a first order system, let's carry out the finding of the step response and see how the answer depends upon the value of a. Okay, so let's find the step response. Of course, the relationship is y of s equals g of s times x of s. x of t is a unit step, so x of s is 1 over s. And g of s we had as s plus a divided by s plus 1 times s plus 3. So we'll put that together to find y of s and then partial fraction expand. y of s will then be c1 over s plus 1 plus c2 over s plus 3 plus c3 over s. And we'll use the cover-up method to find c1, c2, and c3. We'll find c1 is equal to 1 minus a divided by 2, c2 is a minus 3 divided by 6, and c3 is a divided by 3. Now that we've found the partial fraction expansion of y of s, we'll take the inverse Laplace transform and we'll find y of t is c1 e to the minus t plus c2 e to the minus 3t plus c3 all times u of t. And now plugging in the values for c1, c2, and c3 that we found before, we'll find y of t as in the center of the page. And you'll notice again that c1, c2, and c3 depend upon the value of a. Now I'm going to label the first term here as capital A and the second two terms as capital B. And I want you to suppose that the coefficient a is very close to 1. Then the first term, capital A, will be very small since 1 minus a will be close to 0. In this case, the step response will be that given by the term capital B. So in this case, the response of the second order system will be like the response of a first order system to a unit step. 
When the coefficient a is close to 1, this means that the zero of the transfer function is close to minus 1. That is, the zero is very close to the pole. In this case, the dynamics of the pole at minus 1 can be ignored. You can think of this as sort of a cancellation of the s plus 1 term in the denominator and the s plus a term in the numerator. And that gives an approximate transfer function, g tilde, as 1 over s plus 3. So our g of s acts like this lower order transfer function, g tilde, in this case. Let's now go back to look at our step response. So that was y of t equals 1 minus a over 2 times e to the minus t plus a minus 3 over 6 times e to the minus 3t plus a over 3 all times u of t. Now with time, the first two terms are going to die out because of their exponential decay and we'll be just left with the third term, a over 3. So you see that the final value of the step response will be a over 3. The approximation g tilde, you should note, has a DC gain of 1 third. So the final value of its step response is 1 third, not a over 3. So this suggests a way of getting a better approximation than g tilde. And I'll label this better approximation g double tilde and you see this at the bottom of the page. We'll pick g double tilde to be a divided by s plus 3. You note that this has a DC gain of a over 3, which is the same as the actual DC gain of the system. It also has the same time constant as the dominant pole in this case, which is at minus 3. So this approximation, g double tilde, has the same DC gain as the original system, a over 3, and it has nearly the same transient response. A good way for us to understand this approximation is to put g of s into time constant form before we do any cancellation of the pole and the zero. So I'll write g of s as a over 3 times numerator s over a plus 1 divided by s plus 1 times s over 3 plus 1. So in this form you can see the time constants. The time constant of the 0 is 1 over a. The time constant of the two poles are 1 and 1 over 3. You can see the DC gain of the transfer function here as the term out in front of the numerator over the denominator. Then we'll cancel the terms in the numerator and the denominator that are nearly the same. So the s divided by a plus 1 canceling out with the s plus 1. Of course this can only be done when a is close to 1. And when we've done that we'll find the approximation g double tilde as a over 3 divided by s over 3 plus 1, or simplifying a divided by s plus 3. So what we've done here is we found a first order transfer function that has the same DC gain as the original transfer function and retains the dominant pole at minus 3. So we've seen two ways to get approximations for g of s when the zero is close to the pole. And now we're going to look at a third way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to partial fraction expand the transfer function rather than partial fraction expanding the output signal. And when I partial fraction expand it, I'll get two transfer functions, g1 and g2. The first one is a minus 1 over 2 divided by s plus 1. And the second is 3 minus a over 2 divided by s plus 3. Now I want you to recall that when you have two transfer functions added together, we can interpret that as the two transfer functions being in parallel. This idea is represented here. We have the input x of s going into g1 and g2, 
and those two outputs being added together to produce y of s. And this is equivalent to x of s going into one transfer function, which is g1 plus g2. This means our system, s plus a divided by s plus 1 times s plus 3, is equivalent to two transfer functions, g1 and g2, in parallel. Now if A is very close to 1, the top path in this diagram will be very low gain at all frequencies. That is, very little signal will pass through it, and so Y of S will be primarily dictated by the lower path. Since very little signal goes through the top path, we may choose to ignore it. In this case, we can approximate g of s by just the lower path, what we labeled g2. So in this case, our first order approximation for our original second order system is 3 minus a divided by 2 divided by s plus 3. You'll note that this is a different approximation than the two we saw before. One way of interpreting the approximation of this second order system by a first order system is to view the top path dynamics as being nearly unobservable due to the closeness of the zero to the pole at minus one. So the lesson here is that there's another case where we can approximate a higher order system by a lower order one. The first case we saw was because we had fast dynamics and slow dynamics, and then we could approximate the system by the slow dynamics with the larger time constant. In this case, we find that we can ignore dynamics of a pole when there is a zero very close to it. Let's consider the transfer function with the pole zero pattern shown in the diagram at the bottom of the page. So this system has three poles, and one zero. You'll note there's a zero very close to a pole at the point marked three in the complex plane. And these correspond to ignorable dynamics because the zero is so close to the pole. We also have a pole which is far in the left half plane labeled one. And these are fast dynamics compared to the pole at the point labeled two. So, this system can be approximated as a first order system, even though it's third order, because the pole located at the point 1 can be ignored because it's fast, and the pole at the point labeled 3 can be ignored because it's so close to the zero. So we've seen two cases where we could ignore some poles in a high order transfer function. The first, where the poles are very far to the left, and therefore they're very fast, and we ignore them in favor of the dominant poles, which are slower. And in the second case, we find that we can ignore a pole if there's a zero very close by, because these dynamics are essentially unobservable. There's still one more case where we can ignore some poles in the complex plane in order to arrive at a lower order transfer function. And that is the case where the poles are complex and far away from the origin. And there are other poles closer to the origin. I'm not going to go into detail on this particular case, but I will give an example here at the bottom of the page to illustrate it. So here we have a system with some dominant poles labeled one, some high frequency ignorable complex poles, labeled 2, and some fast dynamics, labeled 3. This system can be approximated as a second order system with just the dominant poles. The poles that are complex and at high frequency, labeled 2, will not contribute a great deal to the step response of the system. So that's a review of the cases in which we can approximate a higher order transfer function 
by a lower order one. You've now completed this lecture and all the lectures for 3710. I hope you've enjoyed the course.